that when you log in with your credentials, depending on the role which you are assigned, you will be able to access the home screen. Then on the right hand side, you would have your user details with which you can log in, log out, or even change your password. And if you are assigned multiple studies, you will be able to see the list of studies you are assigned with in the EDC, one below the other, below your username with the change password and logout choices. Now coming to the left hand side where you know the home screen is getting displayed with the study documents, the data entry part and the query aspect. What we would be looking at is the first one and then the others one after the other. This is nothing else but the home screen which is displayed here. Then we have the study documents. When you click on that, there is only one choice to upload the document here. So while as a CRC, I have only one choice to upload any document with respect to the study documents that are available, there might be instances where as a DM, the individual would have multiple choices, maybe not just as an upload, but always also as a download file choice, right? So that depends on what role you have been assigned. Okay. Now with that, one user could be able to browse the documents you know, while we choose to upload you know, any document from our systems like the computer systems the data what we have in our c drive or d drive will be able to you know choose a file and then upload it that's how it works following which there is a choice of data entry you know we have seen this while we did you know an overview of one of the topics that there was the use of the data entry option we used this data entry option for both the screen testing as well as backend testing wherein you know we started with doing the test data entry and identifying what could be the instances where the screens are developed correctly and what could be the instances where we would need to give a follow up with the help of the UAT log. That's where we did the front end testing. Followed by the back end testing where for each edit checks we did the test data entry with respect to the validations which were there in the edit check UAT. So now with the help of you know the testing process we have already gone through the process of data entry but still as you know we look at this you know demonstration part we will go into further details to check what is it that further helps us you know in the data entry part as the user role provided for a crc so let's say we have had a subject list where we did enroll a new subject and started with you know the data entry part but then there were you know entries where the subject lists were restricted to and while we did you know the inclusion exclusion criteria that's when the rest of the visits got available to us so let's try you know giving information for you know the rest of the visits apart from the one which we have already seen in the screening visit 
So from the screening where informed consent is registered and inclusion exclusion criteria is present. From the inclusion and exclusion criteria is where we get the next visits populated or the visits become visible only when the subject is acceptable as per the inclusion and exclusion criteria. So we go for the present trial status. Did the subject come for visit? We hit yes. What was the date of visit, which is going to be a reference from the previous visit, which is screening visit for the informed consent, which is 8th of August 2024. And certainly we would need to update this date for the rest of the data entry because this is 90 days, 180 days. So let's put this as a date from the previous year, possibly. August 2023. So for the testing purpose, we are going with the data entry a year back. Today's data could be entered if we are in August 2024. Certainly the data would not be able to update the. So while we submit these details, there is going to be a reason for change. So we're submitting this information in the testing environment going back to the baseline where we have minus five to minus zero as you know the date which was for the previous year now coming back to the dates being entered as minus five minus four minus three minus two minus one day zero save the form see that it is still appearing in the incomplete status thereby submitting the form which is showing in green now as a complete status form so right now what we saw is quite a bit you know of an information this choice of saving and then submitting is where you would possibly more often you know not see as a choice where a form could be saved as well as submitted so while you know we have this option available which is saving the form this is a partial you know or an incomplete data which is getting saved here so not in every database do you get this particular function but here since we have it in cleansoft while we interpret you know the page status information whether a particular form is complete or an incomplete status or let's say in progress you know status that's where you identify it from the saved you know status that the form is not submitted it is saved because there are changes which are expected in that form all right do you get me on this yes. so now moving from you know the incomplete and complete status of any of the forms which is you know related to the reports which we have seen like we saw how is it that the reports could be interpreted one of which was the page status report where we saw one is reflecting complete and zero lib reflects an incomplete or an in process in progress 
status of the form. Now going from the present trial status to the next, wherein we are looking at the physical examination and vitals. Let's say we select no. Check denied. Again for vitals, we do the same process of selecting no and Going further now, pay attention while we are, you know, selecting a particular subject for the randomization number to be assigned. With, you know, the header information on each and every page, whenever we open, we get the site, subject initial, protocol number, and the subject number displayed. But unless the subject is randomized, we are not going to be able to see this number here. So soon as you know, we randomize a subject, there is a possible sequence how the numbers are assigned, right? So for that, we refer to the subject list where it is a sequence of the number whether you know 101 102 103 followed by 108 9 19 7 is the sequence so 7 is assigned what is it that can be the next number in the sequence is 108 that's where we go and assign the randomization number. This is with due care taken that while you know, we are assigning the numbers, that is where you know we are again sticking to the consistency in the database. So it's not only the way how we are doing the data entry for testing purpose but also while you know we have the data in the database we make sure that the data is as per the entry which is already done and certainly that is the same sequence which will be followed later on now, the drug dispensing form, how is it and what does it contain? So while we look at this subject randomized in a treatment group, you know, this is how the form is going to be as a group A or group B. Let's say we enrolled in, randomized in the group B where the combination of the drug was used medicine was dispensed on the same day of randomization we go for road in the august was it dispensed as per the randomized list we hit yes number of tablets dispensed was 90 because it is 90 days Follow up the batch number was two with the manufacture date thousand twenty two December We have two years, you know, of the shelf life you know, defined for the expiry date. And certainly with the drug dispensing details or the 
data for study drug dispensing is being entered. Following the concomitant mitigation, we report now. And with that, the adverse event is well reported as no. So as for these you know, data entry screens, the way the software would possibly interpret the data is going to be real time you know, for the CRC and the other users as well, be it the DM, be it the CRA. Now for this same data, which is reported here, if I, as a DM, I'm working on this, I am going to have a real time access to it, whether or not this data is available to me. So let's say tomorrow, and the you know, as a first part of the day, I'm expected to send out you know, my reports or today by the end of the day, you know, I'm expected to send the reports which are available with me to the sites or let's say to the CRAs who are then going to follow up with the site. So for me, it is mandatory that I pull, you know, the reports and then certainly go back and cross check whether that data is reported or